Okay, so I'm just going to go through the MongoDB installation process. Uh, first, you're going to open up a browser, whichever browser, it doesn't really matter. You're going to go to mongodb.com and then you're going to download MongoDB. Just click this download icon. You have community server, which is fine. Decide, choose your Windows version. Um, it says Windows Server or later. That's perfectly fine for Windows 10. Um, and we do want SSL support. You'll get your thank you for downloading. It'll ask you to register if you want to. And we're going to save this file to your downloads folder or wherever. So in Firefox, I just click this arrow and click to open the file, and I've got the uh, setup going, so I can close my browser. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to click Next. Then you're going to get I accept the terms. So you know you're going to go through, you're going to read those, and if you accept, you click the checkbox, then you can click Next. Um, you can choose Custom, but I'm going to say because for now neither of us really knows everything MongoDB can do, um, just choose the complete option and go to Install you may get a pop-up dialog asking you to confirm um, that you want the uh, want to allow the app to make device changes to your device. Um, this is a Windows admin option. If you don't have admin rights, you won't be able to do this. So make sure that you're logged into an admin account to install MongoDB. Then you can click Finish, you're good to go. Now, if we go to a browser and type in Mongod, which is the MongoDB service, we don't get anything yet. What we want to do is go find our MongoDB installation. In my case, I installed it to probably, yeah, so C program files MongoDB server 3.414 bin. So what you want to do is go to your program files, find MongoDB, and then follow your folder chain down until you find this bin directory. The bin directory is where our MongoDB and Mongod files are. Um, <clears throat> so the quick and easy way is grab, in Windows Explorer, grab the um, uh, the address bar, just click on it and it'll highlight the path to there. Now we can launch this by saying CD and pasting, and we just right click in command prompt, and pasting our um, uh, URL or not URL, our uh, file path. Um, and then we're there, and we can type in mongod here, and we're good to start. And it tried to start MongoDB, but um, I got an exception. And we'll get into um, the, the problem here, because it's saying that we don't have a data directory yet. But you can see I can start that there. If I want to, I can try to start a Mongo client. Um, it's trying to connect right now locally to um, my local device and then it's saying well a connection failed because I don't have my mongod server running and all of this is not really working to our advantage right now so there's a couple more steps we have to take the first step is we want to create this data directory um, so we're gonna go actually before we create the data directory um, let's add mongodb's uh, binaries to our path so let's go to our Windows icon type in environment variables until you find a the icon that says edit system environment variables you'll get a window popping up just look for the icon sometimes it pops up behind things and then in this advanced tab for system properties you can find environment variables then go look for your path variable there's two of them you have your user variables and your system variables so in the case of user variables, it'll be whichever user you currently have logged in. So if you have multiple users on your computer um, and you want them all to access MongoDB, then maybe you don't want to use this path method. This one down here will make it available to all users. Um, I'm going to use this option. I'm just going to double click on it. So that lets me edit it. And path has kind of a special way of being handled. So uh, path gives you another pop-up and you can click new. And It'll give you kind of like a text box prompt here. You can just paste in the address to the bin folder and you click OK. And OK again, OK again, until you got rid of all those dialogues. Now, 
if I say cd slash, for example, yeah, I'm in the main directory, I can say mongod. Oh, I have to start the command prompt again. Sometimes it takes a minute to propagate. So I'm going to start a command prompt right here. I'm in the C directory, as you can see, and I type in mongod. And you can see um, mongod tried to start. It still has the same error where I don't have a data directory, though. So let's make with that. Um, the data directory you need is... Uh, C data DB. It'll be different if you have a Mac or a Linux machine that you're installing on, so just pay attention to what the directory uh, is that it's implying you should be using. Here we're just going to go new folder data. We're going to go in there and we're going to go new folder DB. And now when we try to run Mongod, it'll start just fine. You might get a firewall issue. Uh, you're going to allow access for MongoDB. And now you've got waiting for connections on port 27017. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, is Mongod has to keep running in order for your clients, which are going to be, you know, your front end web server or your, your um, uh, Windows applications. There's lots of other ways you could use this database, uh, kind of like SQL, uh, but you have to keep this Mongo. Um, server running the whole time in order to serve up. That's what servers do. They serve up the data. So they're, it's responsible for uh, giving clients the data that they ask for. And your data will be housed inside of here. So you can see Mongo automatically created a whole bunch of stuff for us here. I, we're not going to go into what all that is. Uh, so for now, we're just going to leave this window open. We're going to open yet another window. I'm still in the C directory. I'm going to right click with my shift button down, go open command window here. And now I can run Mongo, which is the client software. And it automatically logs into uh, the MongoDB instance that you have running here. Okay, so I took a little break there for some reason, I guess, because it was a new install. It was still kind of doing its own thing. And when I um, had it running, I, I sorry, I had it running, but it just wasn't um, doing its job. So what I did here was I actually went and I pressed Control C on my Mongo server instance, and I reran it. And then when I came back here, I don't need the address. I was able to log in. Now by default, your MongoDB is not protected. Uh, you don't have a user uh, or anything like that, and we'll get into user stuff another time. For now, though. Um, let's just have a quick gander around at what uh, you can do with the MongoDB client. Uh, let's go show databases. That's just a command. You have admin and you have local. Okay, We can go use admin and now we're in a context where we still have access to everything else. We just need to switch to these other databases but we're in a context where admin is our current database, and we refer to our current database often by saying db dot something or other. But while we're in the admin context, we can also say show collections. And right now we only have the one collection, it's called system.version. So let's go db.system.version.find, and then um, the dot find, you notice it looks a lot like a JavaScript um, command, and that's because MongoDB works on a very JavaScript-like syntax, and MongoDB has JSON objects, or they're actually called BSON, binary JSON, but they are um, very much like JavaScript objects. Um, there's a few differences, and we'll learn them along the way. Uh, for now, though, uh, we're just looking at just one document is what it's called, so the, the BSON, or the JSON objects. Um, now, they're not JSON objects, so don't let me confuse you there, but I want to use that terminology, and I probably will accidentally use that terminology a lot. Um, <clears throat> but you can see that they're kind of arranged that way, but they're called documents. A collection is full of documents. Now, db.system.version.find gives me this ID of feature compatibility version and version of 3.14. Um, ID, every um, object or um, document, in your uh, database, every document in every collection must have this ID field, or should have this ID field, I guess. Um, there was a time when it didn't, but if you don't provide an ID, MongoDB will automatically generate for you by default. Uh, now let's uh, look at databases again. 
and you can see I have, I'm going to clear, I think I can clear like so, clear, no, I can't remember how to do it here, CLS, yeah, there we go, okay. So with um, MongoDB, we show databases. Um, we can see we have an admin and a local, but if I go use test, and I say show databases, I still don't have a test database, but I'm currently in a context called um, test. Um, so if I say db.create collection, and I provide the name, let's say, uh, test collection, uh, I have created a new collection in the test database, which means that I've now initialized a test database. So when I do show databases, I now have admin and local and test. And if I say show collections, it'll show me this test collection because I have it in my um, uh, test database and that's the context I'm using. I can also insert into my test collection by saying db.testcollection.insert and then I just provide a plain old JavaScript object, or I can make one, a plain old JSON object. So you should have a key value pair to put data in here. So I'm going to say uh, example uh, data. And if you want to put, so that, that alone would work. Now when I say db.testcollection, oops, test, not text, collection.count, I have one. And if I do dot find, it shows me that example data that I put there. And it now has this ID. Remember I said that MongoDB will automatically generate a built-in ID for you. That is what just happened there. And we'll talk about exactly what those object IDs are at a future date. If we want to uh, drop a database or drop a collection, I think, I, I don't know this one off the top of my head, but I'm going to say drop done. Then I say show collections. I no longer have any collections. If I say show databases, do not have the test database anymore because it doesn't have any collections, doesn't have any data, and there's no reason for it to exist. Now, that is the kind of long and short uh, explanation of how MongoDB works. Uh, we can get into more detail another time.